Okay, YouTube. Here we are. Peep the mug. Buddha fish. No longer on the market. <laughs> so, as you can see by the title and what's on my screen, we're going to be checking out arcs today. Last video, we looked at the character tier list that's most up to date over on some JP site. And I figured why not for the second video in our tier list series make it about the other most important topic in the game, arcs. Which you can see my arc game is nothing to brag about. I kind of briefly looked over the arc list and seems like Unchained Beast is one of the only good ones or the best arc that I have. Uh, if you look at the how they have it ranked. More importantly, let's get over to that list. Vamanos. Alright, so same website as the last video. I'll make sure to drop the link in the description in case you missed it. Go check it out to see if your characters are everything you are hoping they are. So yeah, here we are on the arc ranking, right? All of this is translated from Japanese to English, so the grammar might look a little funny on our side of things, right? Uh, this was most recently updated on the 10th, so two days ago. Obviously, they have the latest arc, the killing, they call it Killing Doll, I think in the English, the eight, the, the global version, it's called Killer Machines or something. Killing Doll actually fits the actual character it's being released with, Alice. But um, they have their arcs structured a bit differently than the tier list of the characters. Each character kind of just had a ranking, which these do as well, but they group all of the characters into tiers. But I think today we're just gonna look at the tier one arcs because they have a nice little structured, detailed list below this general pool. Um, we're gonna check out tier ones today. I think I'll probably do a video for each tier just to break it up a little bit more. And this is a, these are a lot of arcs to cover. It's gonna be like an hour long video if I try to do every single one. Just below that, they have the evaluation criteria. This is everything I wanted in the character tier list. So this actually breaks it down a lot easier for me. Um, if we look at our tier one description, these are arcs that can greatly enhance any character, right? And this is there. I definitely want to have it. I definitely want these arcs. I don't have a single tier one arc, I can tell you that. <laughs> but these are arcs that can just, you can slap on any character and it, they're going to improve uh, that character probably immensely. Um, ranking acquired skills as the most important item. The strongest arc rank acquisition skills as the most important item. This is because once you learn the skill, it will be effective without equipping the arc, and it will be easier to learn than the ether reward. Yeah, theoretically, you could spend all your time throwing every single arc on one single character. Rarity and statuses, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped this. Among them, the firepower skill is especially evaluated but the skill that affects the survival of the character is also highly evaluated in addition to firepower aspect. As example, Proud Force is highly evaluated. I don't know what that means based on my knowledge currently, but okay, firepower skills. Rarity and stat shoes. No, I'm sorry. Rarity and status are not considered at all. In the strongest arc ranking, the difference in rarity is not considered, so L, R, U, R, S, S, Rs, that's not gonna determine anything. The point that the rarity is greatly related is the status, but there's not many opportunities. Basically, I think we get the gist. They're ranking mostly based on the skills that you can learn from the arc, then from the attribute skill, if the arc's equipped with a character, what kind of bonuses does that character get? That comes second, and then everything else is afterwards. There's an ether reward, focus on the performance of arc ether rewards. This is something that I guess at 100%, as you use an arc, it gains this percentage. Once it hits 100%, I think you get some kind of item that you can then use with characters. So due to the effects, due to the effect of the arc ether reward equipment, some arcs are located at higher tiers. Got it, got it. So here we go, just firing it off. Tier one arc details, number one, a 10 out of 10 is this arc, Emperor Dragon El Dravana. I've seen in forums how powerful this arc is, something I would definitely love to have, but I don't think you can even pull this at the moment, and I don't know if they bring it back or have brought it back. I believe, yeah, at level 10, this is the skill that you get. These are the, these are the bonuses that you get if this arc is equipped on the character. Super special move damage, I'm guessing that's the bottom uh, right. 
skill that you can use plus 120 percent and then physical damage gradually increases with the passage of time every wave maximum of 50 percent super special move damage upper limit plus 5,000. that's what people were talking about it raises the damage cap so i guess damage caps at 9999 with this you're going to be hitting 13999 <laughs> that's bad buddha math you're going to be hitting 149999 so, super strong ability. This is what I was talking about. The Arc Ether 100% reward is the Sealed Sword of... Or, Sealed Sword Zelvius, right? MP plus 20, STR plus 225, Intelligence 143, Attribute Light, Critical Rate plus 5%, Light Attribute Attack Damage. I believe this came out with Roland. Um, and I... <laughs> this is probably... This was probably more hype to pull this than the character Roland was. I haven't studied Roland, but just based off this, you can put this on any other character, which is why what makes Ark so useful. Let's see, rare skill on Parade, the Emperor Dragon Eldravana. Has many rare skills, and it is an indispensable Ark in both physics, which I guess means physical attacks and magic, in particular break boost, and Hikari attack raise two can only be learned with this Ark, so they are Arcs that greatly contribute to training. So obviously it offers amazing skills that you can learn as well as provides an OP ability if it's equipped with that character. Just a busted arc overall. Next is this pirate ship Legness. So this is also ranked 10 out of 10. I should mention these characteristic acquired skills and then ether reward. They rank double S, double S, and then just an S. This is an SSR, so you can see that that's what they were talking about. This is a rarity you are, but here they've got a 10 out of 10 and it's just an SSR. So that doesn't attribute to the overall ranking. All right, let's see what effect it gives. Recovers 15 seconds of S of a skill cost timer. I think the T stands for timer. Recovers 15 seconds for all allies as wave progresses. Full capacity plus 35% when a female ally dies. Huh. Okay. 10 seconds from the start of the battle, all allies are resistant to flinch. That's probably useful in arena, high rank arena. The 100% reward is the Great Thief Bracelet. Strength plus 20, defense plus 20. Attribute none when you defeat an enemy. You have a chance to get an item. Hmm. Okay. The skill Pirate's Feast is powerful. So this is one of the skills you can learn from this arc the pirate's feast can be learned on the pirate ship legness is a skill that restores the maximum number of times the feat is used for each wave it's a powerful skill that is used very useful for laps and quests so this seems like a very powerful uh, farming arc right something that you would attach characters that you're trying to grind an event a bunch of times over and over again this is going to help you out a lot all right moving on to number three on the list devil war it's a UR, 9.5, so just like the characters, there's only two 10 out of 10s currently. And this, actually, the Ether reward is the highest rank out of the three categories. Characteristics you get from it, after activating the super special move, 100% of that move gauge will accumulate, will be accumulated only once during the quest. Quest item drop rate, 1.5 times damage received from the divine type, minus 20% god slayer effect, so it... Makes you super powerful if you're fighting divine enemies or divine opponents. And then the Ether Reward, the Ring of Wisdom, gives magic points plus 50, intelligence 94, mind 51, attribute none. At the beginning of the battle, give yourself the effect of resurrection at the time of death. No time limit. Ooh. Yeah, that is uh, that is powerful, definitely. It's given a second life to one of your characters. Very good. Art characteristics continuously hit super special moves huh right because it recharges your gauge once during the uh, during the whatever quest or battle you're going through the deity war has an art characteristic that allows you to hit super special moves into succession so so let's say for example I have this on uh, divine beast ray I can shoot off grand Tyrion and then do it directly after which is pretty insane Character super special move gauge will be accumulated immediately, so you can perform the super special move up to three times in a row. I'm sorry. Huh? Three times? Am I reading that wrong? 
only once during the quest. I'm missing something. I'm missing something here. Item drop rate increases in the Great War of God. The item drop rate increases due to the art character. So if you're farming for a certain item in a, in a quest or event, I guess this is a very useful art to equip to a character, which is cool. Aerial Fortress Solaris. I'm really sad I didn't pull this, right? When I first started, there were a couple days left on the Divine Beast Ray banner, and that's where I dumped all my crystals, mainly because I wanted the character. I didn't realize how useful arcs were. And this was the one that was alongside DB Ray. It's also a 9.5 out of 10. Great characteristics. The acquired skills are just an S and the ether reward is an SS as well. So characteristic at level 10 for 20 seconds from the start of battle. Damage taken minus 50%, so great for tanks. Always damage plus 10%. Lightning damage plus 10%. Lightning attack damage upper limit plus 3,000. This would have been so good. This would have been so good to have. Hopefully they bring it back so I can try and pull it. For the 100% reward, lightning cannon brines. Whoa. See, I don't actually know. I'm assuming the, if it's a cannon, then it's a cannon weapon. I, I don't know if I have a cannon weapon in game yet. But uh, the strength plus 210, intelligence plus 165, attribute lightning, lightning attack damage plus 10%, super deadly. So effective damage is also increased plus 10%. Art characteristics specialized for lightning attacks. That's why they released it with Ray. Aerial Fortress Solaris has art characteristics specialized for lightning attacks. Just equipping the Aerial Fortress will increase the lightning damage by 20% and push its upper limit by 3,000. So same effect as Eldravana. Pretty insane. Recommended to equip it to the Sacred Beast Ray and Thunder Sevia. Duh. I could have told you that one. Arc Ether Reward is powerful. That was also an SS. Arc Ether Reward Thunder Magnetic Brant Cannon Brines of the Aero Fortress Solaris is powerful. Really? You don't say. Lightning Cannon Brines has high stat addition value. Yeah, plus 210, plus 165. That's no joke. Has the ability to increase the power of super special moves by 10%. If you want to equip it, Foul, who can equip the machine, is good. I don't know. Foul, off memory. But maybe you do, and maybe you're already taking advantage of that. Moving on. Rebellious Dragoon. We're about halfway through. This is also a 9.5. The characteristics are SS, S, and S for the three categories they judge it based off of. It's an SSR. If you have it equipped with a character, your critical damage goes up 30% when equipped with a spear. The fuck is in my nose? The magic critical effect, attack type super special moves, will always become critical. Damn. Sounds like a lot of damage you're going to be dishing out to anyone you're super effective against. You're dealing almost double damage all uh, immediately. The 100% reward is the dragon spear. How appropriate. HP plus 200, strength plus 208, defense plus 68, attribute lightning, SCT speed plus 10%, critical to enemies in the air during physical attacks. There's a lot of skills I noticed that pop the opponents up in the air and then you can continue to hit them if you're attacking quick enough. So obviously you get some, an extra damage boost if you're hitting those guys. Strong art characteristics. The Rebellious Dragoons have strong art characteristics. Attack type super special moves are effective against enemies that do not work with either magical physical attacks such as Geborgu, I don't know him, that appears in the Tower of Phantom. Also, when equipped with a spear, the magic critical effect is always obtained, so it goes well with the Lion Prince, right? I called him Leon Prince in the tier list, and I looked back, I was like, that is, that says Lion. It says Lion. And I said Leon. Good job, Buddha. Who can learn the spear high boost by himself? So, Lion Prince is obviously the main damage dealer with a spear. That's who you want to look out for. You can acquire various rare skills with this one. The Rebellious Dragoons acquire many rare skills. In particular, Break Boost is a valuable skill with few arcs that can be learned. That's super, super helpful. I haven't even seen it in game, but I can already tell because at the end of every wave, there's a certain boss that has a meter, which you got to take down. If you can take down the meter that's just below the health, it, uh, it activates this break, which then stuns the enemy and allows you to deal extra damage 
to it, right? It's like you lowered its shield and you get a certain amount of time to deal extra damage to it. So this break boost, I imagine, helps you take down that bar quicker. So a very good skill to have. <coughs> so it can be expected to play an active role in high difficulty quests, right? I imagine getting that break bar is very important when you're taking on difficult events because you're trying to kill some very powerful bosses. Next we have Beast of the End. This interested me because it made me think of Seven Deadly Sins, if you know what I'm saying. I don't want to spoil anything, but if you know what I'm talking about, you'll know what I'm saying. <laughs> Interesting picture we got. It's a 9.5 out of 10. This is actually the first LR that they show on the list. We got double S for the first two categories and its other reward is just an S. I should also be looking at the consumption types that are used. I've been ignoring them, but just to point it out and bring attention to it, these are the different resources that you have to pay in order to bring this arc with whatever character it's attached to. So in order to bring Beast of the End into battle, you're gonna have to be spending blue and red souls. That's good to know. Our characteristics at level 10, ice damage plus 20%, witch slayer effect. I don't know if that's is that meant to say with or witch slayer effect. All attribute resistance plus 10 reduce the chance of receiving a critical attack by 100%, so it's not happening. And grant silence with a probability of ice magic attack. This seems like it would be really good to put on the ice emperor. I can't remember his name, but I do have him in game. Here we go, this guy, Ice Emperor Salios. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but clearly he's an ice DPS melee user, melee uh, soldier type. There we go, I'm learning, I'm learning my types, right? So he's gonna benefit greatly if you've got this uh, Beast of the End arc attached to him. I don't know how to get it at this point, but FYI. Back over to the list, uh, the Ether Reward is the magic ore necklace int plus 70 and mine plus 30 attribute none that's a very basic seems like a very basic item to get from this arc strong acquisition skills right these are the skills that you can learn the beast of the end has strong learning skills in particular the skill ice critical rays which of course would work with salios really well will bring out the strength of character if you let sirios or swimsuit lyra learn it swimsuit lyra i think is the other 10 out of 10 rated character next to next to Rukio. Silence can be added by the art characteristic, which is a super powerful ability in Arena because it blinds the characters, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry, it doesn't blind them. Silence is a condition that prevents you from using magic, so it renders magic casters pretty much useless. In the Arena, it can be used to prevent the use of enemy magic attacks and recovery magic, so even better than what I just said. The recommended magic is Blizzard, which consumes less MP and can be used immediately. Pretty disgusting. Next we have From Scratch, another LR. This is our first 9 out of 10 on the list. We've got an S, then S, and a double S for the Ether Reward. Our characteristics at level 10, SCT recovery speed plus 10%, always useful. Feet damage plus 20% when the skill From Zero is activated. I'm assuming from zero is the skill that's attached with this particular arc. I noticed with UR, not SSRs, but URs, there's an actual arc skill that I think you can use in battle if you have that arc with you. So if the skill from zero is activated, Grand Brave and Grand Aura are automatically activated. When you die, randomly revive one from an incompetent companion. That might just be funny translation, but it sounds like when you die, you randomly revive one of your characters. So let's say there's another character that's dead, and then the character with this arc dies, It ha you have a chance to revive your previously dead or the current dead character, if you know what I'm saying. The arc ether reward is the double S, the Rem Prim. HP plus 150. Defense plus 60, mine plus 60, so nice stat buffs. Attribute none, non-attribute physical attack damage, plus 10% magic damage received by yourself, by whoever this arc is equipped with, minus 10%. Powerful from scratch, learning skill from zero. From zero, that's redundant, is powerful. If you receive lethal damage from zero, you can 
set MP to zero, cut damage for 10 seconds, and recover all HP. So it pretty much sacrifices your MP gauge in order to keep you alive. Especially in the arena, it's safe to become a powerful and essential skill. No kidding. Arc Ether uh, reward is powerful. From zero, the Arc reward. Rem Prim is powerful. For, uh, Rem Prims has a high stat addition value, yet, and you can increase damage and cut damage with one accessory. Very good. Since the damage increase effect is limited to non-attribute attacks, it is recommended to equip to Rem or Bayland. Got it, so we've got Rem in the picture, so you'd imagine that this arc goes with her pretty well. All right, how far are we going? I'm getting tired of talking. Goodness gracious. All right, we're almost done. We're almost done. Airborne Ron Valion. I don't know if I said that right. Oh my gosh. It's a first B. I've only seen S's. There's no A. It just skips to B, but it's still rated at a 9 out of 10. It's an SSR. Its characteristic is an S. The acquired skills seem like the most useful thing from this. Let's see here. The characteristics, right? Barrier automatically activates from the start of battle. Avoids the status reduction effect. Evasion rate 25%. Non-attribute damage attack plus 25%. So it gives a nice little attack boost um, to just standard attacks. And it gives you a 25% chance to avoid status reductions which is good and then there's an automatic barrier pretty solid for a defensive ability um, here we go I want to see what skill is OP from this you can learn the magical aura that is essential for char magic characters the paratrooper Ron Valiant can require the skill magic aura that is essential for magic characters magic aura consumes 1.5 times more MP but it's power is also increased 1.5 times so very powerful skill to have i skipped over the reward it's the magic gun lapisis but i don't even know if i want to read it because it it's a b bro who wants a b <laughs> we see all these s's i don't want a b gives you mp plus 20 strength plus 143 it would be i think it would be an s or maybe a double s if that was int plus 143 Damage plus 10% when attacking with the opponent's weakness at attribute. Got it. Take a sip of coffee. It's almost cold. You can see the, the mug is starting to fade back to black. That means that the temperature is dropping. Here we go. Foreign Megrona is the next on our Tier 1 list. It's also a 9 out of 10. Interesting that... It's below the one that we just looked at since all of its rankings in the categories are higher. Characteristics are an S, acquired skills are a double S, and the ether reward is an A, it's an SSR. Art characteristics at level 10 damage plus 30% to boss monsters of non-human. The more soldier in the party strength rise, grant the silence with a probability to the enemy all at the battle star that was a lot of jumbled english right there so it gives you a damage bonus to non-human bosses if there are more soldiers in the party your strength goes up and then it grants the probability of silencing uh an enemy at the battle start so i imagine that only counts for the first wave in each battle maybe the Ether Reward is the, oh boy, I don't even want to even pr try and pronounce that. Kikuichimonji. Sorry, hope I didn't offend anybody. Gives you a nice little strength bu buff of 171. Attribute none and damage of the first shot of normal attack is plus 50%. Yeah, meh. It's just nice for that strength bonus. Arc essential for physical character training. Fast, critical, and star eye that can be learned in a foreign country. Magrona, that's the name of the arc, are excellent skills that shine with physical attackers since you can also learn attack up too. It's one of the indispensable arcs for physical character development. Absolutely. Fast, critical, star eye, and attack up too, I guess, are the main skills you want to get from this arc. Ether reward with high strength value is also attractive. I don't even think I need to read that description. Moving on, we're looking at Grana Sea Threat. This is a 9 out of 10. Double S, S, and then A. It's art characteristics, break plus 20%. No, I'm sorry. Break plus 120% increase when equipped with an axe. There is a chance that the enemy's defense will be halved and damage will be done. 
got it at the start of the battle strength plus 40 percent increase but it will gradually return over time got it so kind of a huge buff right at the start and then it slowly gradually as it says comes back down um super good arc you can tell for physical attackers the arc ether reward is the aomi axe gilvern strength plus 212 even better than the one we saw before attribute none the power of counter is greatly increased interesting acquire multiple excellent skills grant a sea threat can acquire the skills necessary for a break such as breaker and axe high boost i don't know what breaker is someone in the comments help me out what is breaker meaning right here also, charge special skill one very powerful skill that plays an active part in the arena, so strengthen it with priority. I have the capability of skill charge two and skill charge three, but I don't have an arc with skill charge one, so obviously that's very important. Powerful characteristic specialized for breaks. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. High break performance. Uh, is break referring to the boost? Uh, I'm sorry, the... Oh, yeah, duh, duh. Break is referring to bringing that break bar down, that initial shield that the boss enemies have. So, duh. This is a really good... So, any characters that specialize in breaking the uh, extra health bar work or extra shield bar, this is a great... Um, this is a great arc for them. Here we go. God, Beast, Log, Mechia. Log Mechia. Some of these may be one word in game, and it's just split up because of the English translation. But this is also a 10 out of 10. So these aren't in any specific order. God Beast Lo Log Mechia, or however they, however you say it, is also a 10 out of 10. It got double S, S, and double S. Okay, good to know. This is an SSR. The characteristics at level 10, attack magic that was first activated for each wave 50%. Huh? <laughs> Attack magic that was first activated for each wave. Okay, so the first magic skill that you use is going to have a 50% um, increase. Or 50% MP automatic recovery. No, okay, these are three separate lines. Goodness gracious. So, first magic skill that you play is going to have a 50% increase in effectiveness. The, if you have this equipped with a god character, your MP automatically recovers, which is insane. And the attack magic of all attributes will be critical. Whoa. Whoa. That's strong. It's Arc Ether 100% reward is the Heavenly Cane Rem Road. Wow. MP plus 50, strength plus 102, int plus 216, attribute none, increases the power of attack magic when it occurs by 30%. Holy cow. Arc required for magic characters. They just straight up are like, yo, if you are using magic casters, you need this arc. There's no there's no workaround. The God Beast Log Logmechia is a magic specialized SSR arc that has both extremely high int and powerful arc characteristics. The power of the magic used first for each wave is increased plus 50%. And a critical judgment is given to the attack magic volatility. So you start the battle, you pop Blizzard, which is a full area of effect ice uh, magic attack. And then it's doing 50% extra damage and critting everything. Damn. <laughs> and then obviously the Arc Ether reward is also super powerful with that super high int buff. And the magic is critical. It's increased by 30%. That's just disgusting. Disgusting. If you've got this and you've got a good magic caster, congrats. Oh, and here we go. Here's our last tier one arc, the Silver Gray Sword Saint. Interesting. This is a 9.5. We have an SS, and then the Ether Reward is a double S. This is also an SSR rarity. And at level 10, the larger the enemy, the higher the physical damage, up to 40%. Hmm. Increase the movement speed. Plus 50% feet damaged. What is feet damaged? 
I can't tell what feet damage translates to. When each feet is shot for the first time for each wave. Okay. So it deals extra damage the larger the opponent is. That is an interesting characteristic for sure. The reward, HP plus 200%, that's a fat bu uh, boost, and strength plus 65%. Attribute none when equipped with a sword. Movement speed increases, and feet damage plus time. I need to figure out what feet means. <laughs> Is that the same element as the character? Maybe? I'm taking a guess there. Strong acquisition skills. The Silver Gray Sword Saint has strong learning skills. You can only require the skills with high rare value, such as aiming at key points, Kai, and fast critical and powerful skills, such as Witch Slayer and non-attribute attack rays. That, that kind of went over my head. You can get good skills from it. You can only acquire skills with high rare value, such as aiming at key points, Kai, and fast critical and powerful skills, such as Witch Slayer and non-attribute attack rays. Uh, I don't I don't know what it's trying to say there. Arc you want to attach to a physical character. The Silver Gray can say is an arc that goes well with physical characters. In particular, the feature damage. Okay, feat stands for feature. Plus 50% when each feature is first shot for each wave. Activated at level 10 greatly increases the firepower of the feature. I, I don't know what feature means. Is that the skills that you can use that are attached to each character? Like your first, your, your, your three skills around the general attack button. Is that what it's talking about? Maybe. But, I mean, we get the gist. Very good character for any physical type damage dealers that you have. And that is the full tier one breakdown that this website gives us. Super useful to know. I wish I had at least one of these arts already. But hopefully, we can snag whichever one is on the next banner. And that'll do it for this video. That took care of looking at all of the Tier 1 arcs that are available in-game as of the 10th when, it, when this tier list was last updated. So, let me know. Do you see anything you agree with, don't agree with? Do you have arcs that you didn't even know were as good as they seem to be based on this list wish your boy some luck hopefully i can get some better arcs in my in my arsenal here in the near future yeah moving on to tier two next that video will be coming look out for it so in the meantime work hard play harder see you in the next video